All right, uh, welcome back everybody. Today we are going to talk a little bit about triangle angle theorems. There are two main theorems that we're going to work with and then a couple of corollaries and by the time we get there you'll know what that means. All right, like last time it's going to start out fairly simple, maybe get a little bit more complicated but I don't think there's anything that I'm going to lose you guys on. But we will try to go quickly, try to keep this video under the 25 minutes that the last one was. Okay, moving right into it. Okay, so the first theorem we're going to work with you already know. You just didn't know that you knew it, okay? This is called the triangle sum theorem. What that means is that, um, hold on a second, I'm trying to get these bars to where they are not covering up the text, and I'm having trouble moving that one. Okay, um, it means that if you have a triangle, you automatically know that it's going to be 180 degrees, okay? We've been working with that since probably sixth grade, so there's nothing really, really surprising about that. We will actually try to prove it in class next time, but for now, triangle sum theorem, the measure of the interior angles of a triangle sum up to 180. That is theorem 4.1 on your cheat sheet, okay? Moving right along. Okay, clearly we have a theorem, we're going to try to use it. And what we're going to do is we are going to start with a regular triangle. 32 degrees, 20 degrees, what's the last measure? Nothing hard about this. We, take, we add them all up to, and equal them to 180. Um, let me grab my magic pen. Okay, we're going to add them all up, make sure that they equal 180. Then we are going to say, well, I already know two of these, and so I'm going to substitute those in. Measure of angle K plus 52 degrees must equal uh, 180, so K is going to equal 128. I don't think there's anybody that needs any further explanation on that, so I'm moving right along. Okay, what's the measure of the missing angle? Once again, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to say measure of angle A Measure angle B is equal to 180 minus uh, 53 minus 52. Okay, 53 and 52 together add up to 105. So what we're really doing is 180 minus 105 leaves us with 75 degrees, and we're done. Nothing hard. We're moving on. Okay. Only difference about this is they only give you one of the angles, but clearly we all know that that's not true. This one right here tells us that we know that angle as well. That's going to be 90, and so even without writing anything down, we've got 90 plus 57 plus some angle x is going to be uh, 180 degrees. And so 180 minus 57 minus 90 is going to give us the angle X, or measure of angle N in this case. So that's 90 minus 57, that's going to be 33 degrees. Okay, moving on quickly. Okay, in, in triangle ABC, if measure of angle B is 84 and measure of angle C is 36, what's the measure of angle A? Notice what I have told you right here. I'm going to try to change the color of my magic pen real quick. Bear with me, because I think yellow would be better. Okay. Done. Okay. Notice... Didn't I just change it? One second. Technical difficulties. Save tool properties. There we go. Okay. Now, notice what it says right there. Draw a diagram. I really get, want you guys to get in the habit of drawing a diagram if there is not one already provided and there is enough information to draw one. So, we have triangle ABC. Notice it looks like a 90 degree angle, but I am not going to label it as such. I am, in fact, going to tell you it is not, and I'm going to say it's 84 degrees. Uh, I should put some vertices on there, right? Measure of angle A, 
measure of angle B, measure of angle C. So C is going to be 36. And then we know 180 minus 84 minus 36 is going to give us our answer. 180 minus 84 minus 36 equals measure of angle A. Okay, and let's see what's behind door number one. 60 degrees. Yay, we're done. Okay, we're moving pretty quick. I want you right now to pause the video, answer questions on the next four pages on your own right now. I want you to keep in mind as you're doing this, draw diagrams. We will review these in class, okay? But draw your diagrams. They will help you to answer these questions. Go ahead and pause it. Come back when you're done. All right, welcome back. We're moving on. Uh, these questions you should have already seen, you should have already answered and gotten them all right because you're all very smart. Okay, now with the triangle sum theorem we can solve some slightly more complicated problems, although how hard can you really make it? But what we're going to do is clearly we're mathematicians or mathematicians in training, we want to try to add variables to trick ourselves, trip ourselves up and then say, no, I got this. Okay, so 55, 12x plus 8, and 8x minus 3 are the measures of these three angles. Nothing changes, though. We add them all up. We set them equal to 180. Okay, 55 plus 12x plus 8 plus 8x minus 3 equals 180. We all know how to do this. Combine like terms, 20x plus 60 equals 180. 20x equals 120. x equals 6. Nothing real hard here. It's just algebra. So I'm moving on. Okay, solve for x in the diagram, same thing. We're going to add uh, our like terms, or we're going to add our angle uh, measures. Uh, I do not want that, sorry. I'm going to switch to green, just because I can. 2x plus 8x plus 5x is going to equal 180. Combine like terms, 2x plus 5x is 7x plus 8x is 15x equals 180. Divide by 15, divide by 15. Off the top of my head, I don't know this one, but maybe it's underneath my little bubble here. There it is, 12. Okay, sounds right. But what is measure of angle Q, measure of angle S, measure of angle R? Those are not answered by just finding the variable, so we need to go ahead and do those. Uh, oops. Measure of angle Q is equal to 2x. So 2 times 12 equals 24 degrees. Measure of angle S is equal to 5s, or 5x rather. So 5 times 12 is 60. And measure of angle R equals 8x, so 8 times 12, which is 96. Okay, and I'm done, and I'm moving on. Okay, we're on slide 15 of 33 already, so we're moving quickly. I hope. Let me check the time. See if I need to speed up any. Eight minutes. Yeah, we're doing good. All right. So, we've got another triangle. What is the measure of angle B? Once again, add them up and set them equal to 180. You can do this yourself. Um, and the hint there, solve for x. I am not going to do it. I'm going to leave you to finish this one on your own, and I am moving on. You may pause the video to finish it on your own if you would like. Otherwise, you can come back to it. Now, we are going on to the first corollary to the triangle sum theory. This should say corollary number one. I apologize. I had several different versions of this PowerPoint, or I'm sorry, this smart board lesson. So uh, this one did not make it in there. Hopefully it's in your packet. But it should say corollary number one to the triangle sum theorem. And if you pull out your cheat sheet you will, and you look under theorem 4.1, you will see corollary. It should say corollary number one because I'm going to give you a corollary number two at the end of this lesson. Now, the obvious question to be asking is what is a corollary? A corollary is something that follows logically from the theorem or postulate or whatever it is that you're talking about. Okay, so a corollary to the triangle sum theory 
theorem is something that if you know that the su the angles uh, once again, I'm going to do that a couple of times accidentally. Once, once you know that the angles of your triangle add up to 180, is there anything else that you can figure out right from there? And here's something that we can figure out from knowing that the sums, uh, sum of, an, of the angles of a triangle is 180, and that is when we have a right angle, or a right triangle, we know that one of them is 90 degrees. Right there, that one equals 90. I'm a moron, just in case anybody was wondering. Okay, this one right here is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, if I know though that the rest of the angles, uh, that all of the angles together have to add up to 180, then I know that the sum of these two must be 180 minus the 90 degrees I already have, which means that the sum of the other two angles must be 90 degrees. Okay? So we call this a corollary. Since the triangle sum theorem says that the interior angles of a triangle must sum to 180, we know that the other angles together must add up to 90. So what the corollary says is that the acute angle, sorry, the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary because they have to add up to 180. And that's all it is. So what does this really change our lives all that much? No, but it does save us a couple of steps sometimes in that we don't have to even take away from 180 anymore. As soon as we see that there is this right triangle, right angle in a right triangle, we to find our, our missing information, we can just set everything else equal to 90 instead of equal to 180. Let's see that in practice right up here. Okay, the measure of one acute angle of a right triangle is five times the measure of the other acute angle. Okay. Here is your diagram. I believe I deleted it from your note uh, sheet so that you would have to write it in. What I want to do is I want you guys to be in the habit of being able to draw a diagram to represent the information given. Okay? So 5x, x, and we know that these two add up to, well, not all three angles add up to 180 anymore, but we know that 5x plus x equals 90 degrees. Okay, and that's going to save us one step. Instead of setting everything equal to 180, we can just do this. We get 6x equals 90, divide by 6, divide by 6, and we get 15. Okay, moving on. Let's see, in a right triangle, the two acute angles sum to 90 degrees. True or false? Um, for whatever reason, my mind just blanked when I was looking at that. So that's a good example of a good time to draw a triangle. It's not a hard question, but for if, if ever you just get stuck, draw the diagram. You have a right triangle, you have two acute angles, and they want to know, do these two acute angles add up to 90 degrees? Absolutely they do by the first corollary, the triangle sum theorem. So that is going to be true. And I am hoping that I did not. Yeah, I did. Working with the wrong one. So um, the second corollary uh, is probably not going to be in here. Let me just check. No, I, uh, I'm, I'm working with the wrong um, a slightly different PowerPoint that I wanted to be working with, and I am not about to go redo this video, so I am going to try to just insert a blank page. Yeah, okay, we'll just use this one. Okay, so um, hopefully I didn't screw up the packet, and you do have a spot for this. The second corollary to the triangle sum theory theorem, corollary number two. Okay? What this says is that you may never there can never be more than one right 
or obtuse angle in a triangle. This should be fairly obvious, um, but let's think about the reason for that. If you have a triangle that had more than one right angle, so you, you wanted to have it, make it have two, you'd get something like this. Okay? Okay, there's one, and I want to draw the next one to be a right angle too. Well, it's clear that you cannot connect this figure with only three uh, lines. Same thing with more than one obtuse angle. I want to draw, there's one obtuse angle, I want to draw a second obtuse angle. I again cannot close this figure with only three lines, so I can't make triangles that have more than uh, one right angle or more than one obtuse angle. We can think about it mathematically too. If you know that they add up to 180, say you wanted to have two triangles that, that or two angles that were 90 degrees. You'd have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle C, measure of angle C, and that's going to equal 180. Well, if you take away these 90 and 90, take away 180, minus 180, you get measure of angle C is going to equal 0 degrees. That can't work. Uh, you don't have an angle there. It's just a line, or just there's nothing there. Okay, So that's not going to work. And it's even more obvious when you're talking about two uh, angles greater than 90 degrees, say you wanted to do it, um, when you have two, they're going to be more than, greater than 90, plus greater than 90, it's going to be greater than 180. How can something greater than 180 plus measure of angle C equal 180? Well, that only works if the measure of angle C is negative. And that's not going to be possible because it just a negative angle doesn't mean anything when we're talking about triangles. So that's corollary number two. You can only ever have one right or obtuse angle in a triangle. Okay, moving on. Uh, this would actually be a decent point for me to remind everybody, once again, that a corollary means something that is obviously true once you know something. In this case, we know a theorem. And so there are, these were two statements that are obviously true if that theorem is correct. Okay? So we're going to solve for x. We know, once again, that um, the two angles here, oh, I don't have a pen anymore, the two angles here are going to add up to 90 degrees by corollary number one. And let's see what's behind our challenge question. Oh, what are the three angles? Well, that's easy enough. That's not really a challenge. 3x minus 1. Once again, I don't have my pen. 3x minus 1 plus 31 degrees equals 180. Sorry, what did I just do wrong? You are correct. It is, they are going to equal 90 degrees. Okay? Then we just solve for x. We've got minus 1 plus 31. That's going to be there 30 right there. Uh, 3x plus 30 equals 90. Take away 30 from both sides, minus 30. We've got 3x equals 60. And without doing much math, I know that x equals 20. And then to figure out what each of the angles is, well, let's give them some names first so we can talk about them. A, B, and C. So, measure of angle C is obviously 90. Measure of angle A is going to be 3 times 20 minus 1, which is going to equal 59. And then measure of angle B, we know, is 31. Easy enough. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, we're moving on. Okay. We've got this one, solve for x. Same thing, you can do this on your own at this point, I'm just leaving. Okay, in the right triangle given, what is the measurement of each acute angle? This is another question, exactly the same as what we already have done, so I am skipping it. Okay. Um, what is the measurement of the missing angle? I am skipping that one too. 
I, I suspect that some of the ones that just showed up are not on your packet. That's because they were deleted before I gave you the packet and then I opened up the wrong file and started recording. I apologize. Okay, this one right here. I like this one. Measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 equals what? Well, triangle uh, sum theory corollary uh, tells us that the two acute angles of a sorry of a um, triangle are going to add up to 90 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is clearly 90 degrees. But let's look at the next question. That's the cool one. What is measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 3? I don't know anything about measure of angle 3 as far as my corollary goes. But this is where it's a good idea not to forget what we've already learned about everything else. Um, angle 2 and angle 3 are vertical angles. That means that they're exactly equal to each other. So the measure of angle 2 and measure of angle 3 have to be exactly the same. So let's say instead of having measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 3, it's really the same thing as asking what's the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 because, okay, because 2 and 3 are the same as each other, so you can just substitute them in, and it's clear then that you do have those adding up to 90 degrees. Okay? Let's go on. Find the value of the missing or find the value of x in the diagram, okay? And here's where your hint will come in handy. Mark your vertical angles. Always a good idea to not forget what we've talked about because we weren't just talking about vertical angles and all the other things that we've talked about already in previous chapters just for that context, but we're always going to come back to it. I know that this and this are always going to be equal to each other, okay? And now let's see what I can do with my, uh, my theorems or my corollaries. Is there any triangle here that I can figure out a missing angle to? Sure. This one down here, I, I already know that that one there is 90 degrees. This one there is 20. So I know that this one has to be equal to uh, 90 minus 20 is going to be 70 degrees. So I'm just going to label it right there, 70. Now, if that one's 70, I clearly know that this one is 70, at which point I immediately know that x, well, x is the same as 20, isn't it? Okay? So that's going to be 20 degrees, and I am done. When we go into congruent triangles, we're going to have fun with this because we will prove that those two are congruent, and you're going to love it. All right, here's my favorite question of the whole one. Okay. It looks so crazy complicated that some people are probably overwhelmed already, but it's really not that hard. What we're going to do, we have four triangles here. We want to find all the missing angles. Look for a triangle that has two angles already, and then try to fill in the missing one. Okay. Uh, that, if, with a little bit of looking, is this one here and this one here. 30 plus 90 is going to be equal to 120, so I know this last one here has to be equal to 60. Okay. Once I know that, what do you know? 3 and 4 are vertical angles, so this is 60. Now that I know that, I've got these, let me get my magic pen right here, I've got these two adding up to 103 degrees, so angle 5 has to be, uh, what did I say, 103, so that's got to be uh, 77 degrees which makes angle 6, which is the same, 77. 77 plus 60 is 137. 180 minus 137 to give me angle 7 is going to be 43. Okay, and now we're almost done. I skipped this one all the way on the side because I even didn't recognize that these are vertical angles because I saw a right angle and I felt that that was somehow different, but no different. Vertical angles for right angles work just as well. So this is 90, 90, 45. I know without doing any math, the other one's got to be 45 as well. And I am done. Wasn't that awesome? Okay, let's try to wrap this thing up. What do we got? Okay, exterior angle theorem. Crap, forgot about this one. All right, one more theorem to get, to get out of the way. And that is theorem uh, 4.2 
in your cheat sheet. Exterior angle theorem. That simply says that when you have an exterior angle, that means when you extend one of these lines past the, the vertex and create this exterior angle here, we can do it on another line as well. We extend this line like that, and then this would be an exterior angle. Or we can do it with the third one here. We extend, uh, let's see, we've done that one. Um, yeah, oh, there's, there's actually six of them, so I'm not going to draw any more. Uh, but those are exterior angles. And basically, all the exterior angle theorem says is that when you have an exterior angle, like this one right here, okay, its measure is going to equal the sum of the other two interior angles. So those guys right there. Okay? If you've got those two guys right there, they're going to equal the exterior angle uh, B right there. Okay? Um, a point of, point of interest, if you are doing this, this is no longer ang just angle B, because now angle B could be this guy, or this guy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to need to create another point here. Let's call it D. And so the, the exterior angle would be angle C, B, D. Okay. Let's do a, a couple quick uh, examples on this and get this video out of the way. Um, remember, exterior, the is, uh, exterior angle theorem just means that the exterior angle on a triangle is equal to the sum of the other two interior angles. Let's see where we can use this. Okay. We've got this one here. We've got y, we've got x, uh-oh, two variables, that always means trouble. But they want us to find what x and what y are. We know that x is equal to the sum of the other two angles, because it's an exterior angle here. That's exterior, and these are the two interior ones. Ah, crap. And those are the two interior ones. So we just add them up, x is equal to 55. And once I know that x, sorry, once I know that x is 55, then I know that this, this guy right here, which is a linear pair with him, is going to be 180 minus 55, or 25. Okay. Something's wrong there. Uh, I've, I'm tired, clearly. 125. All right, moving on. Um, you can uh, fill in this chart on your own, because for one reason it uh, has kind of screwed up on my slide here, and for the other reason, the video is already getting too long. <sighs> same thing here. Uh, you can do that on your own. It's exactly the same as the problem we just got to. Let's see if there's anything new here. Uh, no, that's, uh, well, yeah, let's do this one together real quick. Let's see if we've got an answer here. Yeah, so it's asking us for the angle, um, angle Y right there. Okay, we know that angle, um, Angle Y is going to be, um, oh, what is it asking? Use the, oh, I'm sorry, uh, to solve for X. Okay, Y, it's just, it's just holding a place value, so we don't actually uh, need to do any math with uh, Y. But it's asking us to find the value of X by using the exterior angle theorem. So we know that 94 is going to equal the sum of these other two interior angles. Okay, so let's do that real quick. We've got 94 is equal to 60 plus 2x. You solve for x, you get x equals 17. And then once you know that x is 17, you can figure out what y is using any of the ways that we already know. Okay, moving on. Uh, you can do this one on your own. Let's see if there's anything new. Oh, I like this one. Let's do this one real quick, and we'll call it done. And I apologize. I'll give you a short video next time. OK, so we know that this right here, this exterior angle, is going to equal the sum of the two remote interior angles. That means the two interior angles that are not adjacent to it. So 3x minus 5 is going to equal x plus 2 plus 33. Okay, so 3x minus 5 is going to be x plus 35. Let's get x's on the same side, minus x, minus x. We've got 2x minus 5 equals 35, uh, plus 5 on both 
both sides. 2x equals 40. What do you know? x equals 20. And they were just asking us to solve for x, so we are done. But if we wanted to solve for the others, we've got 20 plus 2 equals 22. 3 times 20 minus 5 is equal to 55. And once again, this one would be 125. Okay, and I'm done. That's all, folks. Thanks a lot. I will see you in class.